Today is also World Oceans Day, marked every year to raise awareness about the importance of the oceans and marine ecosystems. It comes at a time that oceans are warming as well at an alarming rate. According to the EU's Climate Monitoring Unit, global oceans were warmer last month than in any other May on record, those records stretching back to the 19th century. To tell us a bit more, in the studio with me now is our environment editor, Valerie de Camp. And Valerie, um, the warming of the oceans seems to be one of the main threats that currently faces our marine ecosystems. Just tell us, first of all, what the implication of that is. Well, according to the data you just mentioned uh, of that report, uh, the average temperature of the sea surface has reached 19.7 degrees Celsius. And essentially what's happening is that oceans, they act like sponges, absorbing 90 percent of the excess heat generated by climate change, driving up temperatures and cascading effects. So the melting of ice sheets, rising sea levels, ocean, ocean acidification and all also ocean heat waves. And so that list of cascading effects in reality goes a lot uh, further than that because oceans are a key pillar of the planet's health. Uh, they sustain so many functions. They produce, for example, more than 50 percent of the world's oxygen. More than half a billion people on the planet depend on marine ecosystems, and yet those resources uh, from the ocean are actually being depleted. More than 90 percent of fish stocks already depleted, 50% of coral reefs is destroyed. And the problem is that all of this is happening so fast, actually uh, faster than the time needed for oceans to recover and adapt to these changes. Uh, for example, IPCC scientists have been telling us that oceans are warming twice as fast as in the last 30 years. So all of this is accelerating. Um, and it, it's all part of a vicious circle because climate change, global warming is accelerating some of these changes. And then that's also making us more vulnerable to the impacts of climate change, because we know, for example, that ocean uh, coastal ecosystems like wetlands, for example, which are suffering from ocean warming and all these uh, uh, issues that I've men mentioned just now, well, they protect us from coastal erosion. They protect us from rising sea levels. And so you see how all of this is very very much interconnected and tipping off, uh, tipping oceans off balance can disrupt a very fragile uh, equilibrium uh, we depend on. And Valerie, just tell us a bit about your experiences. You're a reporter who has firsthand witnessed some of the changes that you've actually just described for us now, yeah. including severe marine heat waves in the Mediterranean here in France. Absolutely. So last summer, the Mediterranean Sea was hit by its worst marine heat wave in decades. So uh, temperatures reached 28 degrees Celsius at a depth of 28 meters. So something scientists have never seen anything like it. It's unheard of. And marine heat waves have been described as underwater wildfires because quite literally they ravage entire ecosystems. So weather team at Down to Earth, we report reported on this phenomenon, which is pretty much underreported and overlooked. Um, and we went to Marseille uh, in southern France, and we spoke with two divers who were able to see firsthand what was happening underwater as it unfolded. And I want to show you a clip of our report, and you're going to understand why we call them uh, underwater wildfires. Let's take a listen. pour mon plaisir à Marseille. Je suis moniteur de plongée, spécialisé dans le domaine de la plongée profonde. Et cette année, on a assisté à un phénomène absolument inédit, à savoir qu'on a eu des épisodes de chaleur de l'eau particulièrement importants. On a atteint des pics de 28 degrés jusqu'à 28 mètres de profondeur. Une augmentation de la température de cet ordre-là, ça n'est plus de l'eau, c'est une coulée de lave. Et sur les 15-20 premiers mètres, l'intégralité est, euh, est brûlée. Euh, et donc, on voit ces gorgones, elles étaient euh, rouge sang, rouge, euh, rouge violacé. Euh, elles sont devenues vertes. Ça m'a fait penser effectivement à ce aux images qu'on a vues des incendies de Gironde euh, après l'incendie, où on voit euh, l'arbre qui, qui est 
sur pied toujours avec ses branches et on voit ce tronc noir plein de suie. C'est l'image qu'on s'était fait avec, euh, avec Nicolas de, de cet incendie euh, sous-marin. J'appelle ça un génocide, est peut le terme est peut-être brutal, mais quand dans un espace donné, une population d'individus se retrouve intégralement euh, supprimée, rayée de la carte, j'arrive pas à appeler ça autrement. The thing with uh, marine heat waves um, is that they're not as visible as perhaps, you know, heat waves happening, uh, terrestrial heat waves. And scientists, though, on the other hand, they tell us that from 2015 to 2019, every single area of the Mediterranean was subject to at least one marine heat wave per year. 2022 was an historic year because it lasted so long. It started in April and it went all the way uh, into October, and that's what makes marine heat waves so deadly compared to terrestrial heat waves, because terrestrial heat waves never actually last that long. Imagine being in a heat wave from April to October. Um, and what you saw in that clip is the consequences of, of marine heat waves. They can lead to mass die-offs of marine life, uh, corals in particular, as we saw just now, and some species will inevitably disappear. More than 50 uh, species of according uh, to scientists, have been affected in the Mediterranean by marine heat waves. Now, fish, because of their mobility, they can, uh, you know, swim uh, into uh, deeper waters and stay cool and avoid the heat wave. But other species like corals, for example, they live attached on rocks and so they cannot escape. And that's what's uh, causing those mass die-offs in, in, in corals. Uh, I guess, as, as with anything else related to climate change, what's, what's so uh, difficult is that this is going to become a lot more, marine heat waves will become a lot more frequent, a lot more intense. And the problem is that if they come back every sing single year, year after year, those ecosystems will not be able to recover. And that's what we, when we're entering dangerous territory. Valerie DeCamp, our environment editor, thanks very much indeed for coming in and telling us about that, that really important story. Thank you.